So John McDonnell is the Labour Party's shadow chancellor, and he would be in control of economic policy if Labour won the election. And it's no secret that he is a Marxist. And in 2006, uh, well, this was discovered in March 2016, but in 2006 he named Lenin and Trotsky his biggest influences. And then a film from 2013 emerged, again in 2016, where he's describing himself as a Marxist and he's been waiting all his life for the banking crisis. This is quite interesting, actually. How do we change the system? We've got to demand systemic change. I'm, look, I'm, straight, I'm honest with you, I'm a Marxist. You know, I've been, this is a classic mark crisis of the economy, a classic capitalist crisis. I've been waiting for this for a generation. <laughs> for Christ's sake, don't waste it. You know, let's use this to explain to people this system based on greed and profit does not work. What we need is a system based upon planning for need and democratically controlling. A Labour source told The Telegraph, the recession hit the working and middle class people hardest and it's telling that John considers their pain a necessary, even welcome sacrifice. McDonnell even tried to play down the film yesterday, saying, it was a joke. I also said the bankers have done more to undermine capitalism than any of the Socialist Workers' Party's activities in 40 years. Yeah, but that's not a joke either. That's fucking true. I, I mean, there are so many libertarian types who go on about the fact that we don't live in a capitalist system. We live in a neoliberal corporatist system, where the corporations and banks, if they fuck up, they don't collapse as what Hayek wanted. They get bailed out like what Keynes wanted. And that's not helping the world, is it? That's globalising everything. That's making the poor poorer and the rich richer. We need the rich people who fuck up to fail. And it's okay if they do. In fact, that would be a healthy market. In March, he told The New Yorker magazine that the aim of the Labour Party under him and its left-wing leader, Jeremy Corbyn, was to bring down capitalism. He quoted Marxist scholar Frederick Jameson saying, it's easier for people to imagine the end of the earth than it is to imagine the end of capitalism. Adding, and that's what we're about, aren't we? Yeah, well, okay, you say that, but people see having access to markets as economic independence. They include that as part of their freedom. The concept of freedom, I don't know whether you're familiar with it. They want that. They don't want someone to take away their freedom. In fact, they've fought very hard to defend it multiple times throughout history. So I can understand why people wouldn't be wanting exactly what you're offering here, and you're just treating it like it's some blasé thing. Like, economic freedom isn't important. And I don't... I mean, I'm not, I'm not entirely in disagreement with, like, a lot of the sort of right-wing libertarian-style philosophers who say things like, look, there can be no personal freedom without economic freedom, because you need money to do everything. If you want to go somewhere, you need money. If you, well, you, you want to buy something, you need money. If you want to live in a nice house, you need money. Freedom from... A, a poor man isn't a free man. And that's literally your position. A poor man is not a free man. And yet, you would rather make everyone poor. That's your solution. I mean, nobody's... There's no fantasy that people get wealthier under socialism overall, is there? I mean, that's not a delusion you buy into, is it? You're concerned about how wealthy the poor are. So if you can make the poor marginally more wealthy, and I'm not even sure that you will, in fact, I'm pretty certain you won't, and make everyone else the same level, do you not see that as you restricting other people's freedom via economics? I mean, that's obviously what it is. So the idea that, like, people wouldn't be opposed to that... <laughs> And they wouldn't they wouldn't want to imagine an end to their own personal freedom, starting with the foundational economic freedom. Because personally, I don't really want to be a slave to socialism. I mean, when the French king asked the merchants, what is it I can do for you to improve our economy? They said, leave us alone. That's what they wanted. And lo and behold, we ended up with a massive bourgeoisie of which you were a part there are things we can do for the poor, but implementing a state-planned and controlled economy that will eventually make everyone poorer is not one of the good things, in my estimation. But the thing is, you don't seem very well-meaning when you appear under communist flags and next to pictures of Joseph Stalin. That's really what I think the problem I have is, especially when you send a message to a rally in Trafalgar Square from Jeremy Corbyn to a bunch of Stalin-worshipping communists. 
Left-wing protesters unfurled banners of Joseph Stalin and called for a class war. I don't think that's necessarily wise, is it? I mean, I think that might be our equivalent of a race war. Hundreds of activists took to the street of central London for an annual demonstration, with some chanting the names of infamous communist leaders as they walked through the city, beneath communist hammer and sickle placards of a flag of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's regime. I just point out that's because they're relatively socialist, like most Arab regimes. That's a nice hammer and sickle you've got there. That's that's nice. This is oh yeah, this is just oh nice nice yeah. This is this is just brilliant, John. You're doing what are you doing? What are you doing? What in what world did you think this was actually a good idea? Unless you're some sort of fucking communist ideologue, which you assume which you appear to be. <laughs> it's just just a quote from a worse murderer than Hitler. <laughs> Just Joseph Stalin. He's, he's fine. He's, look, at he's not bothered. He is, no, this is my hero. Shut up. How is this not the equivalent of a neo-Nazi with a picture of Hitler and a quote? Presumably something about the Jews rather than class. Is there anyone out there who thinks that this is somehow less repugnant to, say, a Western democracy? To see these people lionising these mass-murdering dictators... But I guess we better hear how the speech ended. So we need your support in these coming weeks. This is our opportunity, brothers and sisters. Some of us have worked for this for all our lives. So the message is this, yes, Carpe Diem. Seize the moment. This is our chance. Take it, brothers and sisters. Solidarity. Did we hear what we want to hear? <laughs> Just, this, is, this is literally like Theresa May going to an EDL rally where a bunch of the EDL members have got Nazi flags and have got pictures of Hitler on their fucking t-shirt. Imagine the shitstorm. Jeremy, why are you forming solidarity with a Stalinist movement? I don't understand. I don't understand why you do this. Like, I mean, you must understand. I, and I, I mean, I understand ideologically, but I mean, politically. You must understand this is fucking terrible optics. I mean, liberals aren't communists as much as they're not Nazis. And most people in Britain are some version of liberal. Whether even if even the conservative people understand that a market economy is far superior to a planned economy instinctively they wouldn't even be able to tell you why but they know that that's the case and they know this because of what's happening in venezuela right now <laughs> it's just the whole country is imploding no socialist countries have been good you know that castro was found with 900 million in wealth when the average wage per month in, in Cuba was $25. I mean, come the fuck on. You must, you must be insane to think that that is beneficial to anyone other than the dictator. <laughs> Just, what the fuck are you doing, Jeremy? Why would you send these people messages? These are the fringe lunatics. Again, it, like if Theresa May had attended a neo-Nazi rally, this is what this would be like. Imagine just all of the fucking Nazi symbols walking past and Theresa May going solidarity. So the march was made up of a mishmash of different groups, protesting from everything from political issues in Iran to the Ukraine, and a bunch of communists, apparently. I mean, like, like the Kurdish PKK turned up. Oh, brilliant. A bunch of communists turned up. So all some variant of socialists. Oh, Corbyn can win the socialist policy. So yeah, just, just basically a communist rally. The funny thing about this is that Labour had actually been going up in the polls. I'd be interested to see how they fare after this. 